morning, everybody. Welcome to church. Come on in, find your seats. We're going to sing to Canaan's land. I'm on my way. When we get started, go ahead and feel free to join around here and start clapping right away. Once we get everybody in, we'll sing it through all together. And then we're going to switch. We're going to hum it. Feel free to sing ooh or hum. But we're going to hum. And during that time, I'd like you to meditate. And while you meditate, I'm going to pray. 
And when I finish praying, we'll keep singing. And then we're going to go back into singing with the words to come into end. Okay? So here we go. Let's praise God together.
sing those uh, beautiful songs today. If you can turn with me uh, to Luke chapter 17, just to let you know, welcome. Uh, I really appreciate us having a nice spring day. I know there's not too many Sundays that seem to have been like that this year. Uh, a lot of rain, but um, it is during this time we've been looking through the Gospel of Luke just to really get our inspiration on what it means to understand Jesus, understand God, and really draw our hearts nearer to Him. And Luke 17, we'll be getting to the scripture there for a second. There's a difficult um, passage in there. And sometimes you have to look at difficult passages to really see where you're at and who you are and who we are with God. Um, starting in verse 5, um, it says, The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. That's after being told that you have to forgive your brothers seven times seventy, which uh, is a, could be another communion for all of us, but it's a powerful uh, statement. And Jesus replied, If you have faith as small as the mustard seed, you can say to this small berry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the seed, and it will obey you. And here's where it gets really tough. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking ahead, uh, looking after the sheep. Will, be, will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Wouldn't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also would. So you also, when you have done everything you said you were told to do, should say, we are the servants. We have only done our duty. I know for myself, when life gets busy, it's easy for me to go through the motions and trudge through the days. I personally can struggle with that temptation to cut off myself of everything to try to accomplish all that I am, including God's love for me. I will answer the call of the master, but it's only grudgingly, like a slave looking at the end of the day to rest. It's really a sad place to be. It's kind of like the older son wanting the fattened calf to celebrate with his friends, truly missing the heart of the father. But the scriptures don't end there. And when I need to, I have to go to other scriptures to get myself off the mindset of being a slave doing his duty. I have to transform my heart my mind and my added towards to what God wants me to be in the scripture and looking at this. So some of the scriptures that can really change that is, look, John 10, 10. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. My personal favorite, John 12 through 15. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their lives for their friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I made known for you. And finally, a passage from Paul about our faith over in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is a gift from God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And when I myself ponder these scriptures, it restores me to the understanding of God's love. He wants me to have a relationship with him for him to be my greatest treasure, just as he did to have a relationship with me. And how do I know this? And how can you know this? He wouldn't give in his firstborn son to suffer on the cross for your sins or my sins without that kind of love. We didn't earn this unconditional love and incredible grace because of our great faith. As a matter of fact, it's because of our lack of faith and God working through us that we can have that kind of love. It is truly a gift of God. And for a purpose beyond our imagination and thoughts. 
if we focus on what we want to see, we are stupid. If we focus on what we want to to we'll miss God's purpose and start living a shallow life, longing for something more than what a slave does for his just obeying his masters. We want that friend. We want that relationship. And when you think of the scripture in Luke 17, it's a call for us not to have the mentality of part of a slave just doing his job. It's really to really see who God is and saying, yeah, we are his servants. We are his slaves in so many ways, but it's a slavery of love, of purpose, of gifts and faith that brings our life to the full. And it, we can only have that because of God's sacrifice for us with Jesus on the cross. So as you reflect, as you're taking the communion, the bread and the wine, just remember that God loves you and wants you to have him as his great, great treasure. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we look at you. We know that faith is there for us to really understand your depths that you've given us more than we can ask or imagine through your son, Jesus, and that we can have a purpose, we can have love, we can have a family, and be your sons and daughters, and just celebrate what your love has meant to us. Thank you for Jesus, in his name, amen. amen.
So just before um, we say a prayer for our, our offering, I um, want to do a couple announcements. I know most of you got this, but there are uh, two that we need to highlight. One is the yard sale coming up on June 1st. Uh, we need to make sure that Maggie knows um, by next week if you're going to be participating, so please sign up, talk to her, talk to someone on the leadership team just to let it know because right now uh, we don't have too many people signed up with, so we're contemplating on possibly canceling or postponing that because of that. So if you're planning on it, she needs to know. So, and uh, definitely it's a great thing. And it's for um, our um, special missions, if I can remember words, that'd be great. But. Um, it's um, really a, ch a chance to serve and look for others' needs. Um, second is um, Jesse Arlington, our brother that was baptized. His dad had a massive heart attack over the weekend. He is improving. Um, he's been talking um, and remembering stuff. So there, he's definitely on the feeding tubes. They're definitely going through to see what else needs to be done to help him in that. And uh, they'll find out more information on Monday. But if we can just keep them in our prayers as uh, we think through, uh, I know it's a tough time to have your fathers suffer with heart attack. So let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can uh, um, have uh, a great family. We just pray for uh, Jesse's father, David, as he's uh, recovering. We pray for your mighty healing hand to be with the doctors and your spirit to be there just so that he can make full recovery and understand how um, you really do take care of him. And we're just grateful that you do take care of our uh, brother's sister, especially young ones, and help us to be a support to him. And as we just take up this offering right now, we do remember that it's for you for your glory and how you really are um, truly being shown through what you work through this church. And God, we're just grateful that we're part of this great family. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yan Uri Murga Doctor Anna Yanim in the Bharium Hindu Ajara Pragarimala Yella Ajaringalum Chitagalum Ajari Chipon in the Varana. Our marriage was happy. We have two sons, but I was feeling some sort of emptiness in my heart. Then none of my relatives told me that uh, she had been secretly following Jesus. Then I too began searching for the for a church that is based on Bible. Four years, I went to different Pentecostal churches, but never felt satisfied. I felt these churches were not based on Word of God. Amazingly, God answered my prayers, and I was able to find Indian uh, Church of Christ, that is True Advent Church of Christ. I am in the Bible. 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 ஏஷ்யுல்விஷ்யுல்விஷ்யுல்விஷ்யுல்விஷ்யுல்விஷ்யுல்விஷ்யுல்விஷ்யுல்விஷ்யுல்விஷ்யுல்விஷ்யுல
we were so grateful to god our evangelism became more meaningful more purposeful eventually we decided to join a mission team to kannur and i started working for the church and my husband continued to work as a veterinary surgeon the church then asked viswana and suma to move to kottayam to help the church there but viswana's boss refused his transfer request oru aayseyilum 8 manikkur njan avadhu nu yathra cheythu kottayam sabayil varugeyum അവിടെയുള്ള ഡിസേബിൾസുമായിട്ട് നല്ല ഫെലോഷിപ്പിലായിരിക്കുകയും ചെയ്യും പക്ഷേ ഒരു ദിവസം തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും എനിക്ക് ട്രാൻസ്ഫർ ലഭിക്കും എന്നുള്ള പൂർണ്ണ വിശ്വാസത്തോടുകൂടി എല്ലാവരും എനിക്ക് വേണ്ടി പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ചു അവസാനം കഴിഞ്ഞ വർഷം വളരെ സന്തോഷം എന്ന് പറയട്ടെ ദൈവം എനിക്ക് കോട്ടയത്തേക്ക് ട്രാൻസ്ഫർ തന്നു ഞാനും എൻ്റെ ഭാര്യയും കോട്ടയം സഭ നയിക്കുന്നു തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും എന്ത് തന്നെ സംഭവിച്ചാലും എന്ത് തന്നെ പ്രതിഘട്ടങ്ങൾ വന്നാലും ഞങ്ങൾ മുമ്പോട്ട് തന്നെ യേശു വിശ്വസിച്ച് മുമ്പോട്ട് പോകും യേശുവിന് വേണ്ടി എന്തും ചെയ്യാൻ ഞങ്ങൾ തയ്യാറാണ് Whether it was their unbelieving family, extreme health problems, or issues at work, Iswana and Suma never took their eyes off Jesus, and God helped them overcome their obstacles. Please stand on up as we sing a song. Similar to the, the video, we have to live by faith. So let's sing about by faith.
Feel free to take a seat. Less than an hour. Aircraft from here will join others from around the world. And you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interests. Perhaps it's fate that today is the 4th of July and you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live, to exist. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Anybody know what this place is? This is Gettysburg. This is where they fought the Battle of Gettysburg. 50,000 men died right here on this field, fighting the same fight that we're still fighting amongst ourselves today. This green field right here, painted red, bubbling with the blood of young boys, smoke, and hot lead pouring right through their bodies. Listen to their souls, man. I killed my brother with malice in my heart. Hatred destroyed my family. You listen. Take a lesson from the dead. If we don't come together right now on this hollow ground, we too will be destroyed. Just like they were. I don't care if you like each other or not, but you will respect each other. And maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll. Learn to play this game like men. Yeah. So those are three of my favorite movie speeches of all time. As a child, as a young adult, as a person in college, depending on when they came out, uh, you can't help but feel inspired, right? You can't help but feel ready just to, from air going, go to war or even from Independence Day, to go fight some aliens, or in this one, just to come together, just 
to be a unified group of people who love each other, right? Like, th these speeches are, are inspiring, and they fill us with courage. And a lot of times, you kind of want to get up and go do something great, right? You're like, all right, service over, let's go out and just take the world, right? That's, that's kind of the point of that. It gets, your, it gets your blood moving, it gets you dreaming. Um, this feeling that you feel after you watch something inspiring or hear something inspiring, it's a God-given feeling. I believe that. It's been placed in us to inspire us to dream. It, it, God gives us this, this need to feel inspiration and this need to fulfill inspiration. And it's in us, and, it, and it's a beautiful thing. All of us have been called to something greater. All of us have been called to the greatest speech of all time. You know, and that speech includes God's creation, it includes the Bible, and it includes Jesus, and it includes you. This speech, we are living in the greatest speech. We are part of God's speech. This is our lives. This is what we were created for, and it's why we still exist on this earth for. Is this great, inspiring speech. You know, God designed us to be the great speech of the world, our lives. See, the problem, though, is we need a catalyst. We need a little kick. We need a spur, right? How many of us need a little spur every once in a while, right? All of us, at some point, we, we need some kind of spur. So today I want to talk about the catalyst that God has given us, the little spur that God has given us. Anyone want to take a guess what that is? Yell it loudly if you've got something. The Holy Spirit. Yell it louder. The Holy Spirit. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about, we're all good there. I'm going to skip the next slide. Andy, I'm not getting anything. Cut me two. Just skip that one for now. Um, my title is Dream Bigger. Skip that one for now, Andrew. Thank you. My title is Dream Bigger. You know, guys, we, we can all have a hard time seeing the greatness that God has put in us, right? This, this gift that God has given us. We just see it as some cool idea. The Holy Spirit is some kind of nebulous thing out there that, you know, occasionally does something cool in our lives or does something weird that we can't understand. Uh, and, and that's kind of accurate and true. But that's not the point of God's Spirit in you. It's to help you to dream. We're going to have some fun here, aren't we? Um, but I think a lot of us, most of us, all of us at some point, stop dreaming the way God wants us to dream, right? We kind of get content. We get comfortable. We settle into our lives and just hope nothing bad happens. Right? You been there before too, guys? Like, like that's the easiest place to settle in. Like, okay, just don't mess up. Nothing bad happens. My budget's good. My family's good. I don't lose my job. Let's just keep going. And, and that is okay for a while, but it gets boring. It wouldn't be a very inspiring dream, right? It, it wouldn't be, that wouldn't be in the speech there that Aragorn gives right before. He's like, okay, guys, here's what we're going to do. We're going to fight so we die, and then we're okay. Like, that wouldn't help anyone, right? That would just be boring. Instead, he makes the command that there will be a day when men fails, but today is not that day. I love that. Like, just gets me excited. Like, give me a sword. Let's go have some fun. <laughs> anyone come with me? Tony would come with me. Tony would. I would fight in a war with Tony. I bet you he'd be a battle monster over there, man. Woo! But as we have to learn to dream bigger. And God has given us a spirit for that very purpose. You know, we need to see that the spirit is not just some simple thing out there, but it's a megaton super catalyst put in our bodies to inspire us at the right moments to live out God's speech. You know, most of us here, I believe, all of us here, I believe, want to do something great. Have even attempted to do something great, right? Like, we've, we've made efforts, and, and sometimes they've been successful, and sometimes... They don't. But guys, we, we've all been feeling that. It's all part of who we are. And I can't tell you what those dreams are. I can't tell you how God is going to use you. That's not my role. That's you and the Spirit's connection. But I can tell you that God wants us to have real, radical, inspiring dreams that not only change our lives, and not the lives of people just around us, but the whole world. Anyone in this room could be that catalyst to change the world as we know it today. We just have to listen. We have to dream. We have to be inspired. You know, you want your movie speech moment, right? We need to be inspired by God every day. You want to dream bigger? You have to really believe what God tells us about the Holy Spirit. So we'll get to one of our main passages today. Let's see if I get it. There we go. Ephesians 3, verse 20. It's the Holman Christian Standard Bible Version. And it says, Now to him 
who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Just let that settle in a little bit for a couple seconds. Because he is able, he's talking about God here, to do above and beyond what we can ask or even think about. You, you might think the immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine, right? There's, there's many translations of that. In fact, I have a couple of them for you there. They're switched over if you want to read through some of your favorites. Immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. Above and beyond. Far more abundantly than we can ask or think. To do super abundantly, that's a cool word, super abundantly more than we dare ask or think. Far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. To do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think. And there's a reoccurring theme in all the translation versions. It's, it's, it goes beyond what we can even comprehend or think. It goes beyond what we can even ask. Meaning, even if we could think about it, we couldn't even ask it. That's how crazy God's spirit inside of you and its power and what it's capable of doing in your life. Guys, God doesn't just suggest this, though. And sometimes I think we can get in this mindset, like, yeah, that's just for those who are kind of spiritual or super spiritual or, or have risen to the, the third heaven instead of the second heaven, right? Or whatever you get into. No, guys, God promises us this is the case. So if it's a promise, then it must be true. And if it must be true, then we have to attempt to get there and obtain this. And not only attempt, but make our best efforts. Because God's promises aren't given to us just for fun. He didn't just write these in the Bible and have a bunch of prophets over thousands of years tell us these things just so we can sit there and go, oh, that's kind of a cool idea. No, he gave us this promise so we could go live it. So we could be excited about what our lives are about. As he can do more above and beyond all we can ask or think about. It's not just a cool idea. It's the ultimate promise. For this to work, though, you have to believe it. You have to want it. You have to want it as badly as those men of the West wanted to save the world. Or, you know, you have to want it as badly as anything else you've ever wanted. But by the Holy Spirit, God will do this through us. And we can't even comprehend how it works. And when it happens, you're not even going to understand why it happened or how it happened. But it's part of God's speech, and it involves you. And then you might even ask yourself, well, why in the world does God want to use me? Anyone ever asked that question before? I have, right? Like, why me, God? Like, just use somebody else. Well, here's the point. It's not about you, right? In Ephesians 3.21, it says, this is the verse right after, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. See, the first thing you have to realize if you want to live God's dream, if you want to be part of God's speech, is it's not about you. So it seems kind of kind of productive to some degree, like, well, if he wants me to be part of this, then how is it not about me? Because it's just not. Yeah. It's about God's glory. And, it's, and it even gets better. It's about all generations. Jesus Christ to all generations. Forever and ever. And so you really want the Spirit to use you? You want to dream bigger? You want to be a part of God's speech? Realize it's not about you. Step one. And second, start listening. God will do this because... It's not about us. It's about his glory. And showing everyone his glory. I have a cool little another video clip here that I think will help explain some of the Holy Spirit involvement here. It's uh, from the Bible Project, and you are, you're free to show these things anytime you want, so it's kind of cool, so we'll utilize that. If you've ever heard the phrase, the Holy Spirit, and you want to know what it means, where do you start? Well, you have to start on page one of the Bible, where the uncreated world is depicted as this dark, chaotic place. But then above the chaos, God's Spirit is there, hovering, ready to bring about life and order and beauty. Okay, but what is God's Spirit? Yeah, so the Spirit is the way the biblical authors talk about God's personal presence. The Hebrew word is ruach. Ruach. Yeah, you got to clear your throat at the end. So what is it? Well, ruach can refer to a number of different things, but what they all have in common is energy. Energy? How so? So there's an invisible energy that makes the clouds move or the tree branches sway. Right. Wind. So in Hebrew, that's ruach. Okay. Now take a big breath. <sighs> so you feel that inside you. Yeah, the air? Well, specifically the energy, right? The vitality in your body that you get from breathing deeply, that too is ruach. 
And this is the same word used in the Bible to describe God's personal presence. Just like wind and breath are invisible, God's spirit is invisible. Wind is powerful and so God's spirit is powerful. And just as breath keeps us alive, so God's spirit sustains all of life. Yeah, Ruach. Now, as we continue on in the story of the Bible, we see God's Ruach giving special empowerment to people for specific tasks. The first person in the Bible this happens to is Joseph. God's Spirit enables him to understand and interpret dreams. And then it happens to this guy named Bezalel, and he's an artist. God's Spirit empowers him with wisdom and skills. He's given creative genius to make beautiful things in the tabernacle. And we also see God's Ruach empower a group of people called the prophets. They're able to see what's happening happening in history from God's point of view. That's exactly right. And here's the problem as the prophets saw it. While God's Ruach had created a really good world, humans have given in to evil. They've unleashed chaos into it through their injustice. A new type of disorder. Yes, and the prophet said the spirit would come, just like in Genesis 1, but now to transform the human heart, to empower people to truly love God and others. How will this new act of God's spirit happen? Well, centuries pass and we are introduced to Jesus. And at the beginning of his mission, there's this beautiful scene where Jesus is being baptized in the waters of the Jordan River. Yeah, the sky opens up and God's spirit comes and rests on him like a bird. The story is saying that God's spirit is empowering Jesus to begin the new creation. And we see this happening when he heals people or forgives their sins. He's creating life where there once was death. Now, Israel's religious leaders oppose Jesus and they eventually have him killed. But even here, God's spirit is at work. The earliest disciples of Jesus, who saw him alive from the dead, said it was God's energizing spirit that raised Jesus. This is the beginning of new creation. Yes, and it's still going. When Jesus appeared to his closest followers, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And soon after that, the spirit powerfully comes on all of his disciples. So that they can become a part of this new creation and share the good news and learn how to live by the energy and influence of God's spirit. And so today, the spirit is still hovering in dark places. Yes, pointing people to Jesus, transforming and empowering them so they can love God and others. And the Christian hope is that the spirit is going to finish the job. The story of the Bible ends with a vision of a new humanity living in a new world that's permeated with God's love and life-giving spirit. Hey, thanks for watching this video on the Holy Spirit. This is one of many videos that we make where we take a biblical theme and trace it from the beginning to the end of scripture. The Bio Project is a nonprofit animation studio. You can watch all of our videos for free on YouTube, and you can help us make more by going to our website at jointhebibleproject.com. You can't skip that if you want to show it, so here it is. <laughs> Part of the deal is fine. Um, guys, God's spirit is amazing. Ruach, right? You gotta add that extra clear your throat part there. The Holy Spirit is transforming and empowering us into God's vision of a new humanity. Look on the lines they say in there. We have to dream bigger. We, are, we need to dream bigger. We have no excuse. We have God's Spirit in us. And, and I thought some of the stories that are really inspiring to me, if you just look at some of these, Joseph, a great man of integrity, entrusted God. That was God's spirit. Deborah, great woman judge who led Israel's army. Gosh. David and Goliath, a tiny, scrawny little boy, kills the largest man, one of the largest men who ever lived, with a sword eventually, but with a stone and sling. Uh, Elijah, a prophet, I mean, he, he stood up against the whole world of that time. Right? Day of Pentecost, 12 men changed the world with God's spirit. Prayer of boldness, a literal earthquake happens from prayerful faith in God's spirit. And then Stephen Acts 7, a man who stood up against the religious liars without being ashamed or afraid and ultimately paid the price for it. So but I want to focus on Acts 8 here real quickly. You turn over there or you can look up here if you want. We're going to read one story that I don't think a lot of us always associate the Holy Spirit with. And it's actually all over the story. And, it, and it's more like our story than anything else sometimes. And so um, it starts off here, it says, And Saul, approving of their killing him, that Stephen, who just died, by the way, we just mentioned that in Acts 7, on that day, 
a great day of persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. You know, guys, this is a pretty rough story at first glance. We're going to continue reading it in a second. Um, it can seem like things were not going to a great place, right? I mean, if this, if this is our society today, if people were coming to your house and dragging you out to prison, and one of the most faithful men that you knew just got stoned, I think we'd be a little scared. I think we'd have a hard time seeing God's spirit working. And I think this is our lives a lot of times. Things happen that distract us or blind us to how the Spirit's moving, and we can get focused on something bad or something hard or something difficult that's taken over our lives. And we can start missing how God wants us to keep dreaming. And these guys could have gotten to that place for sure. But I want to tell you, the Holy Spirit was working more than you could imagine through this situation. See, it never stopped working. Sometimes we just lack the faith to see how it's moving. Saul was destroying the church. Would you have the faith to keep seeing the Spirit? See, we need to dream bigger. We need to seek to see more and to be used more, especially during the trialing times. We need to dream bigger so that we can even see just a little bit more of how God's speech is going. You know, have you felt the Spirit push you lately? Have you ever felt that little voice in the back of your head? Or you just felt compelled to do something that you're like, why in the world do I think I need to do that? Anyone? I'm not saying, in, I mean, right? Lori all the time. This happens to Lori every few minutes. Lori is very attuned to the Spirit. It's why she's a very faithful woman who gets a lot of people to know God. Because I, I, I know you, I know you, you know, I know you know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about God gave you a front row seat when you pulled up to work. I don't know, a front row spot in the parking lot. I don't think that's what he's talking about. Where you win on a scratch ticket and you find $5 in your pocket. I'm not talking about those moments. I'm talking about a real push. When you see someone, you go, I need to tell that person about my God. Or you just see something that needs to be done in someone's life, and you go, I need to serve that person. Or you just feel the need to call someone. Like, I just should talk to that person. I should ask them how they're doing. Right? Or you feel the need to confess a sin. You're like, this is something that's been on me. I need to share this. Or you just feel a need to serve in some way in the church. Because that's a spirit, and it's trying to spark you. It's trying to help you dream. It's trying to give that little kick that you need. What's actually kind of cool is this happened to me this week, and I didn't even realize it until afterwards. So I'm in Staples, and I'm going to check out, and as normal, I am talking a lot to the clerks and everyone around me because I just don't shut up. Um, so I got a good job here. And, and, and I honestly don't remember what I said to the guy, but he says out of nowhere, I need to go to church. I was like, ding, 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 ding. Well, okay, something's clicking here. And so I went, well, why don't you? I don't know, just what I said. I was like, why don't you? And I pulled out one of my cards. I started telling him about what I do and about our church. And, and the guy's like, okay, I need to talk to you tonight. So he takes my phone number, and he called me that night, and he shares his whole life story with me. All the hard things have been happening to him lately. And this guy's had some bad things happen to him lately. And I was just like, man, if I just ignored the spirit and just said, yeah, that's cool, you need to go to church, and just checked out and walked to my car, I would have missed this opportunity. And I set up a Bible study with him on Monday, I don't know what's going to happen, but I just listen. I just followed. I, I was a part of God's speech, and it's not about me. I did nothing. He literally volunteered the information he needs to go to church, and all I had to do was say, you should go then, because that's what the Spirit's constantly doing. It's constantly moving through us to dream just a little bit bigger. Let's see what happens next in the story, because this is where it gets crazy cool. Okay. In verses 4 through 8, it says, those who had been scattered, preached the word wherever they went. So I want to stop right there for a couple seconds, because we, we read this one sentence sometimes too easily, and we forget what just happened. These people were being hunted. They had to leave their homes and run away to some other place to avoid being arrested and probably killed. And what did they do? They preached the word wherever they went. God used this intensity of persecution to spread his word all over the known world. All these people who came to the day of Pentecost were baptized, those 3,000, and then those 5,000, those other people that grew, they were all from other places. They were just living in Jerusalem with the disciples because everyone took care of everyone that had need, right? Acts 2, 42. 
And then they all just left. They went home and they just started to preach. Because the Spirit was moving in a way that they couldn't imagine. Saul thought he was winning. The, Jew, the, the Israelites, the Jews that were opposing the Pharisees, they thought they were winning. They thought they had won. They had smothered out this, this thing that was happening. This change, this disease, this thing that was going to impact the, the Jewish faith in a negative way. Instead, they spread it like fire. It went everywhere. And then it focuses on Philip in the next verse here. Philip went down to a city in Samaria. By the way, the Jews and Samaritans didn't get along very well. In fact, they pretty much hated each other. Weren't supposed to associate with each other. And he proclaimed the Messiah there. And when the crowds heard Philip and the signs he performed, they paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks and impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. So the next great thing happens is a Jew who just became a Christian goes to a city of Samaritans who they're not supposed to like, and great joy comes from it. Guys, you have to dream bigger. These kinds of things can happen in your life. There's nothing saying you can't go somewhere and bring great joy because you preach the Messiah to people. In fact, we have enough evidence to suggest the other side of it, that when you do go to other people and preach the Messiah to them, great joy will happen. You know, people fled. Great pain and persecution happened to all disciples in Jerusalem. Yet God's dream was bigger. And the men who were listening to God's spirit, their dreams were bigger. And they decided to present God's word. Because every single situation in your life is a chance for God's spirit to work. It's a chance for you to dream a little bigger. It's a chance for God's spirit to just whisper in your ear something so subtle that you don't even notice. And you just open your mouth or just act on it. And you begin to be part of God's speech. You begin to dream a little bigger. Guys, we have to dream bigger. Do you want to dream bigger? Do you want more purpose in your life? Do you want more fulfillment? Do you want to hear the Spirit more often telling you what to do? I know you do. You wouldn't be here otherwise. Because this is an amazing story. Let's keep going. It gets even better. I love this story. Now, for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great, and all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, this man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip, as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed it was baptized. And he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. Guys, there was nothing special in Philip except for the Holy Spirit. And he was willing to open his mouth. And he dreamed what God could do. Guys, God could do crazy miracles. And, and it's often thought that Philip went from there, he, he meets the Ethiopian eunuch soon, shortly after this, and then he goes down to Africa, and they think that he spread the gospel down there. He's the first missionary to Africa. Guys, in this story, if you don't believe that the high-powered people that you meet in your companies or at schools or wherever you go can't be converted, then you don't believe in God's spirit enough. Because this man was being proclaimed as a power of God as he walked around. All Philip did is come in and start preaching Jesus. And it says everyone that was following this guy got baptized. And then this man himself, this very powerful man, who had people following him for years, got baptized and followed God. It's incredible. He went everywhere, just followed him in awe. Because people will do that. And not to your glory. Again, we know this. It's to God's glory. But people will be in awe of your life. If you really dream and you really act on the Spirit, what it tells you. People look at you and go, what in the world do you have that I don't have? And I want it. Because that would be God. That's his dream. That's his speech. That's you living out for his glory. Guys, where can you bring the gospel to? If you just follow God's spirit. You can just dream just a little bit bigger. Who could you help change someone? Who could you change someone's eternal destiny? Even the, the CEO of your company. What, have you thought about that? Have you thought about how powerful you could be? That you could, you could live through God's spirit so strong and powerful and faithfully that you could just convert the CEO of your company? Think about that. How, have you dreamt that? Has that ever come into your mind? Or even just your boss? Right? Has that ever popped into your mind? It needs to. Because I know the Spirit will tell us that if you listen to it. 
You know what's crazy is this Saul that started this whole frenzy is the same guy that becomes Paul later on. So in two different instances, Saul sparked some of the greatest Christian movements in history. One was by trying to kill them, and the other one was when he finally realized whose side he needed to be on. And then he goes and preaches to the Gentiles all over the known world. I mean, this Saul slash Paul guy was used in his sin and in his faith. I think we like to be used in our faith, not our sin, right? I, mean, I don't know about you. I've been used in both, I'm telling you. In college, I converted more people because I was a sinful mess than I did because I was a faithful person. And, and I prefer the other side. You know, he used a lot of my negative stuff to help other people see God. God, it's not about us always knowing what to do. It's just about opening our eyes, dreaming bigger. In Ephesians 1, 13 to 14, we, we had this in a sermon not too long ago. It says, oops, there we go. When you heard the message of the truth, oh, I didn't finish the message, did I? Oh, I did. Never mind. Great. Right. When you heard the message of the truth, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed in him, you were also sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. He is the down payment of our inheritance for the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. Guys, the Spirit not only inspires us, it not only guides us, it not only helps us dream bigger, it doesn't just whisper in our ears, it is God's down payment for your souls to be with him in heaven for all eternity. And this lives inside of you. This is part of who you are at all times. Do you think we should listen to it? Just a little bit more? And a little bit more the next day? And a little bit more the next day? Guys, it's amazing what we have in us. So what do you do with all this? Right? Like, okay, cool, I know the Spirit's supposed to tell me certain things, and i got to listen and obey. And, um, well, first of all, you've got to start dreaming. you got to start dreaming again, if you were a dreamer and you're not anymore. If you've never been a dreamer, you've got to start learning to dream. If you're visiting with us today, from wherever you come from, are you dreaming about a relationship with God? Is that what brought you here today? Have you been looking? Have you been trying to figure out what in the world and how in the world does this all work? But that's God putting in you a dream of having a relationship with your Father in heaven. Study the Bible. It is an easy answer, I know. And I say it a lot. Study the Bible. And not just read it and go, oh, okay, let's see what it says. I mean, dig into it and ask God to help you dream about what it's going to be like to have a relationship with God. If you're a member here and you're a Christian and you've been for a while or a short while, you need to start dreaming again. Because you know when a church is dreaming, crazy things start happening. We want some crazy stories to happen in our church. Some stuff you go, that's on that, that video there, like those, those people from India. I mean, that's incredible. We want stories like that to happen. We need to start dreaming again. Not just hoping to stay faithful, or our marriage doesn't screw up, or our kids love us someday, or I can pay off my debts next month. Those aren't dreams. That's earthly things that are going to pass someday and not matter anymore. What's going to matter is God's dream for you. Not just a better job but a better way to serve God. Not just to feel better, but the ability to bring good news to others so they can feel better and know God. Guys, start dreaming while Holy Spirit dreams. Who in your family, your job, your neighborhood, can become Christians? Have you stopped dreaming about that? Have you stopped praying those prayers when you first became a Christian? Right? How can God do some incredible miracles through you and the Holy Spirit? Who can you have an eternal impact on if we just start dreaming again. We have to start dreaming again. The last song we're about to sing here in a second is uh, one of my favorite songs. I love that Sierra leads it. Um, it's Even Greater Things. Right? That's, that's the actual title. Good. And I was like, did I write that right? And I, I want to read the first uh, verse to you in the chorus because I think sometimes we don't listen as much. It says, Take what I've been given, make it multiply. Take this life I'm living, make it touch the sky. You can take us higher than we've ever been. Lord, you will inspire. Lord, you always win. Even greater things than have been done before, take what we have done and make it more. Even greater things than, than have been done before, even greater things through Christ the Lord. Guys, we have to start dreaming bigger. God will always be dreaming bigger than us by giving his spirit to us so we can hear it. Let's push the promise 
to go to even greater things, be a part of God's speech. Thank you. Oh! 